I know that my dad was in mine rescue, my grandpa, my other grandpa, and my grandpa before him. So pretty much my entire family has been in mine rescue. So I was a third generation miner with uh, my grandfather and then my father. And uh, now my son Shane is uh, currently taking mining engineering technology at Cambrian College. So he'll, uh, he'll be a fourth generation uh, uh, miner here in, in Sudbury. I pretty much want to work in the mines and improve the mines even more than what they already are. And safety is probably one of my highest priorities. So try to improve safety so there's zero fatalities at all around the world in mining. My, uh, my mom's dad uh, was uh, a miner for Inkle and uh, currently valet in Sudbury. And uh, he uh, was killed in a mining accident in uh, 1974. Uh, my mom, after my dad passed, my mom was giving you know, my brothers and I some different memorabilia and I came across his uh, basic mine rescue uh, certificate. So he was also trained in mine rescue and I didn't know that at the, at the time. My dad always told me he didn't want me to get into mining. Stay the hell out of mining, he used to tell me. Actually, pro probably a little stronger language than that. And, and really pushed me other ways. And uh, it was only after he died that I actually got into mining. And uh, I think he'd be proud of where, where I ended up in my career. Um, so when, when Shane's finally going into mining, I'm pushing him more on the, the technology side um, so that he doesn't maybe have to experience some of the things that I've done. You know, at first I was a little maybe nervous that I wanted him to understand how important safety was and emergency preparedness. And I see it starting to affect him here at home as well, that uh, he's, he's prepared. He has his lunch made the night before. Uh, when he goes out to cut the lawn, he uh, does a pre-inspection of the lawnmower. He wears uh, steel toe boots. Uh, the whipper snipper, he wears his, his uh, safety glasses. I always take a step back, think for a second, okay, what can hurt me? What can't? What do I have to watch out for? and how can, I, how can I prevent that? Uh, I started in mining in 1989. I spent about 10 years as a miner, and then um, during that time I, uh, I had met my wife. She's always been very supportive of uh, my mine rescue activities. I think her dad being involved in mine rescue was, uh, was a big factor there, so uh, she already knew a lot of the people involved in mine in the, on the competition side. She knew the mine rescue officers from going to watch her dad compete. When I'd get a call for mine rescue to go, she wouldn't go back to sleep after I left. And uh, just on reflection of it, you know, I think I didn't know what I was charging into. Could have been a fire, could have been a fall of ground, it could have been, uh, could have been anything. Um, but you know, your training kicks in, and you just want to go and help the the guys that are that are down there. But the family that's left behind is thinking, you know, what could potentially happen to my my loved one now that they're going into the danger. So while everybody's coming out, we're going in. It's amazing what he's done so far. Um, he's told me quite a few stories of guys dying in the mines or getting injured in the mines. They never really knew that I was gone on a call. Pretty young when all that stuff was happening. I don't really recall all that. But I'd like to sit down and have a good chat with him about that one day. My father-in-law competed for, I want to say, I want to say 20, 24 years or so. And, uh, he was actually district champion nine times during that time. And the closest he ever came to a chrome dome was, uh, was second place. And uh, we were having dinner uh, uh, one evening here and uh, he, was, he was carrying on about mine rescue and so I went downstairs and put on one of my chrome domes and, and came up and sat at the table. And I didn't have to say anything and uh, I got told off in uh, French, English and various other ways. but. Uh, it was quite funny to see his reaction that, uh, that here's this kid that he encouraged to get into mine rescue had already won a championship. So uh, yeah, I, I, I got rid there. People think it's competing just to compete. It's actually a training method as well. There, that's the, the only way we can really put stress on somebody to judge how they're gonna react under stress. All of my supervisors at one time were in mine rescue. And there's a lot of training involved to be prepared for those kind of situations. A lot of hard work, uh, dedication, and a lot of training, for sure. So right in the, in the local community, uh, um, I know of uh, five mine rescue guys that just live around here. So if there's a call in the middle of the night, you know you're gonna see certain five vehicles leaving, leaving this, this area. We work together, and, and a lot of times we play together as well, right? And uh, uh, Ron Boutet across the street, and Ron and I used to work together and travel together and compete together, so 
So, uh, you know, we, we see these vehicles leaving, we know that they're, they're going on a call. A lot of my friends work for my dad or with my dad, so I hear a lot of things from them too. Uh, well, since I'm in mining engineering, it's a lot of planning out where we're going to mine, how we're going to mine, what equipment we're going to use, and how to keep guys safe. So I see technology that improves everything in our everyday life. We see it in our homes, at the workplace, and there's always room for improvement in everything. It was heaven changing to the BG4 because basically you're trusting your life with this piece of machinery. And uh, I remember the first fire that we went into and it was uh, wearing the BG4s. And, uh, and when my number two man snapped the glass tube to test the CO, the tube immediately filled. He didn't have to put it in the pump. After that day, I, I figured, okay, this, this machine will be all right. So I do have a, uh, a Dragerman tattoo that, uh, that I have on the, on the back of my leg. And um, it was something that I had always thought about doing. And uh, I have a couple other tattoos. And, and uh, when I was retiring from active duty, I thought, well, I want everybody to know that I'm still a Dragerman. <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm a Dragerman. So uh, a, a true Dragerman is somebody qualified in mine rescue and has actually gone under oxygen to fight, uh, to fight a fire. And uh, believe it or not, in the first issue of a Superman comic, uh, Dragerman are mentioned. Uh, there was some guys trapped and they said, oh, thank God the Dragermen are here to save us. So it's a very old, uh, very old name. There's always about something being the hero of someone's life and helping them continue living. The other, the other thing that they say is that uh, firemen on surface, uh, the reason why Dragermen are so cool is because firemen need heroes too. 